Hello. Um, I'm getting quite. I'm getting to enjoy this now. Um, I was a little bit nervous at first doing all this sort of stuff, but um, now, yeah. Uh, obviously, I would much rather be in front of you all teaching, but um, it is what it is. So we have to deal with it. Um, right. Okay. We're up to yellow belt. Okay. It's me again. Hello. I hope you're all well. Uh, this video has been recorded on uh, Mother's Day, so I hope all you mums out there are having a wonderful time and being looked after. Okay, you deserve it. Okay, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't all be here. So, um, respect to all of you um, and love, of course. Um, right. Okay. So, yellow belt. We're gonna we're gonna have this uh, done in two parts. Okay because yellow belt is an awful lot to do. Um, it's the first time we do sparring, there's just uh, uh, a lot to learn, okay? And a lot to fit into the grading. So I think the video would be too long to put on Facebook, so we're gonna do it uh, this way. All right, so the first thing you would have to do, again, some of it we're not gonna repeat, some of it we are gonna repeat, okay? Because you've seen it before. And again, it just saves my back. I'm sorry to keep banging on about it, but um, yeah, I'm really old and really decrepit and my back doesn't work. So here we go. All right, so the first thing you need to do, you need to do 45 seconds worth of wide press-ups. Okay, now I'll just demonstrate one for you. Normal press-up position. Let's see if you see that. Yeah, your shoulders are here. Wide, they're here. Okay, like this, okay, like that, and you go all the way down and all the way up. And you do that for 45 seconds. Okay, now, the strategy for that, everyone goes up like a, like a ferret up a trouser leg. Okay, so the easiest way to do it is to think, right, how many realistically do you think you can do? First grading white belt was 10, second grading was 20. I would say aim for 30 press-ups in 45 seconds. If you get fatigued, try not to go onto your knees. Okay, but 45 seconds wide press-ups. Then you do 45 seconds crunches. Again, we're not going to do crunches now, but um, you do 45 seconds of them. Okay, what we are going to do now is, I'm going to go as a southpaw here. You do inward crescent kick, outward crescent kick. Five, okay, so I'll do one for you, okay, here, one, two, and then back. So it's inward, don't put your foot down, outwards. So again, in, out, and back. Five of those. You don't switch your legs, just do it off your normal stance. Then you do one minute of skipping. Again, we can't skip because the roof is too low. Blah, 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 boring, boring, boring. Um, but uh, you'd have to do a minute. The last 15 seconds, if you go normal pace, last 15 seconds you really speed that pace up. Okay, and the, the grading team will give you that nod so that you know when that 15 seconds is up. Next thing on the item is a power cross. I'm going to revert back to being orthodox. So power cross. If we have a speed cross, which you do a white belt, it's just like this, okay? No movement of the front foot, just twisting your back foot here, like that. This is a, a normal, normal right cross here, or a southpaw left cross, okay? But in this case, we're going to be orthodox, so it's a normal cross. When you're yellow belt, you do what's called a power cross. So you're moving your front foot forward, creating a longer base, then throw the shot. One, still rotating, you can see here, if I do it from this angle, stepping, but still rotating. Still need to drag this foot a little bit. Don't leave it here. Step, then rotate here. Speed cross, your stance would be here. Power cross, stance is probably a little deeper. Okay, but again, make sure you're stepping first, then throw the shot. A lot of people, yellow belts, tend to do this. Step and punch at the same time. If you hear boxing uh, commentators say, the person, oh, what a great shot, he really planted his feet. It's the same. If you go like that, your feet aren't planted. If you go here, plant your feet, then throw the shot. Again, getting the body mechanics to work for you. So that's a power cross. Next one, uppercuts. Okay, from here, 
Left hand, right hand. Left hand, right hand. Again, don't wind them up. This isn't Rocky Five. Okay, we're not going like this. We're not going like this. Okay, here, just nice and tight, nice and tight. Chin down, here, okay. Drop the weight, here. Good way of remembering it, <laughs> particularly in this current uh, financial crisis, um, is to uh, imagine someone's put about here the, lot, the winning lottery numbers. Here, they're written here. So when you throw the punch, keep looking, keep looking at the lottery numbers, okay? Don't go like that, okay? Keep head down, here, drive the punch up, drive the punch up. So left uppercut, right uppercut, very simple. Axe kick, okay. From here, axe kick, cross between a rising kick and an outward crescent kick or an inward crescent kick. Doesn't really matter, okay? whether it's outward or inward, as long as you get extra height and the kick comes down, like the name suggests, like an axe, chopping some wood. Some people actually call it chop kick. Um, so axe kick, okay, you can go off the lead leg, here, one, all right, or you can go off the back leg, here, one, all right, but make sure, I'm gonna change to uh, southpaw, okay, it can either go, this way, or it can go this way, all right? So it has to go high and down. So again, if you watch it, okay, inward, down, outward, and down. Doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as it comes down. Hitting with the heel, the bony part of the foot. If you're sparring, you'd use the bottom part of the foot, because otherwise it would hurt your opponent. Next thing, knee strike. Here, hands go out, okay, hold on to the pad or simulating someone's shoulder or someone's, the back of someone's head and drive the knee up and then back up. Here, simulate, knee, back up. Simulate, knee, back up, moving the head continually. Simulate, knee, back up, okay? Again, that was uh, southpaw. Step side kick, we're gonna go back to orthodox now. Okay, step side kick here, you would be in this position, so you change your stance from a normal, normal position to a sideways on position, to a longer base. So this is what we would call a, a, like a kicking stance, okay? So from here, okay? The kids like to call it a power ranger stance. Yeah. All right, so, so it's kind of like this. Right hand up, left hand down. You don't need to have the hand up because the distance isn't quite as... Uh, Imperative that you have your hands up, okay? Then you step your foot behind and you step and kick like so, okay? So you step in here, again, have to forgive my back, one, like so, okay? Outside edge of the foot is the part that you use, okay? So when you're stepping, step here, raise the leg, raise the leg, kick, and then back down. Step side kick, okay? All right. Now, at Yellow Belt, you start to do balance drills, and here's the first of the balance drills. All you need to do is lift one of your legs up, all right, and slowly do a front side kick. Dead easy. However, what makes it hard is you have to do 10 without putting your foot down, and then you have to switch your leg. So if you're southpaw, you might do 10 with your left. Don't change your stance, do 10 with your right. The orthodox, again, you go 10 with your left, 10 with your right, okay? Quite difficult. Everybody doesn't, I would say, out of all the things we do in kickboxing in our syllabus, and this is the most hated thing, but it is what it is. Then we're going to do defensive work. Slipping, okay, all right. So a punch comes in, all right, and you're going to slip this way. I'll get closer so you can see, all right. In comes a uh, jab, you slip this way. Don't go like this, it's too much, okay? Just slip, just here, just slipping this way. One, just turn the shoulder, lean forward slightly. So here, if you see, just slightly dip your head forward, like that, okay? Yeah, so slipping here, cross comes in, slipping this way, slipping this way. So jab, slip, cross, slip. Jab, slip, cross, slip. Jab, slip, cross, slip. Okay, if you look from a distance, slight turn of the foot, slight turn of the foot, 
here. But again, don't go on like this, like this. Too much of a waste of energy. Just let the punch whiz past your ear. That's the object of the slip, okay? Designed against the jab or across. Okay, bobbing and weaving. Okay, designed against hooking. Right hook comes in, bob underneath it. Left hook comes in, weave back to where you started. Here, hook comes in, so you bob underneath it. Left hook comes in. Here, you go this way first, this way. Obviously, it depends on what the person's throwing. Again, left hook comes in, we go this way. Another left hook comes in, we go this way. Okay, right hook comes in, we go this way. All right, normally it's done in a grading. One, two, one, two, like this. Common mistake, people go like this, okay? All right, A, they look at the floor, they're not looking at the opponent, all right? But here, you have to come up in between, okay? And the last defensive movement is a downward palm parry, designed against an uppercut, okay? So here, if a left uppercut comes in, palm parry with your left hand. Right um, uppercut comes in, palm parry with your right hand, okay? All right, so again, here, all right, watch the foot twist. Here, left uppercut, right uppercut. So it's the alternate hand, okay? Their left hand, your left hand. Their right hand, your right hand. Okay, now, I'm just gonna add to the footwork. When you're red belt, you went this way, this way, this way, or this way. Again, I have to be a bit careful here and a bit uh, creative with the footwork. But now, you're kind of going, here, yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear, you can just about see that. Here, you're going in circles, here. Never change the stance. If you're orthodox, always have your left foot in front. If you're southpaw, always have your right foot in front. But you're now circling. Same principle as before, you never cross your legs. Okay, all right. Now, the other thing we need to talk about is a yellow belt. It's the first time you're going to spar. And it's hands only, so it's boxing, basically. Okay, and hands only. No contact whatsoever. In integrity martial arts, we don't have any contact at this level. Anyone that wants to hit people, that's fine, but they'll have to come back and retest in, uh, in three months, okay? Because they won't be allowed to pass the grading, okay? Uh, in fact, they probably won't be allowed to stay. Because if they can't control themselves, then we don't want them. All right, so um, yellow belt will do no contact sparring, okay? So uh, it's difficult to, to kind of demonstrate, but imagine this, this is person's face. Can't go like that. In fact, if I put it on, uh, bear with. Um, here. All right, so if this is the person's face here, that is not acceptable. That isn't acceptable. That definitely isn't acceptable. What's acceptable is that. Not this, this is too far away but here, without touching, okay? And it's hands only. So um, it needs to be really, really well policed. Obviously we have young people, we have six, seven year olds who are just growing up, bless them. You know, they're lo lovely kids and, and we don't want them to be put off by the excessive aggression that will come at a later date. So we're building up their confidence at yellow belt to have absolutely nothing, all right? Um, yeah, so say no more really. Um, obviously some of the adults, some of the adult guys who, who like to fight, like to fight, in fact some of the kids, and, and they like to fight. Obviously you have to hit, it's kickboxing, you have to hit. However, okay, in the grading, as I said, without the risk of repeating myself, yellow belt level, there's no contact whatsoever. Okay. Um, now, things you're going to need, obviously you need your boxing gloves, but you've got them anyway. You need your wraps, which you've got them anyway. You'll need a gum shield and a head, uh, helmet. Um, now, helmets are a bit contentious issue, if I'm honest with you. Um, I have a bit of a thing about helmets. Um, most of our gradings these days are done on mats, on matted areas like this. And the only real purpose of a head, it doesn't... The only thing that really protects you is like a, a nose bar that goes across your, your nose, here, okay? Cheap protectors, really, okay? Could stop your face being cuffed. But the concussive impact of a head guard is pretty well exactly the same. However, 
because um, our insurance tell us that we have to have them, we have to have them. Um, and uh, head guards are a must. The main purpose, if you're doing sparring and you fall over onto a concrete floor and you're not wearing a helmet, crikey, you'll soon know about it. Okay, so um, for safety's sake, we just have everyone who is yellow belt and above sparring in a grading, gum shield, mouth protector, helmet, head guard, however you want to do it. Helmets are a bit like boxing gloves um, and, and foot guards, to be honest. You can pay £30 for a head guard. Pro probably, yeah, yeah, about £30 by the time you get it delivered, about 30 quid. Or you can pay um, £100. Probably even more than that, 150. It's a bit like boxing gloves. Boxing gloves, you can pay 30 quid, or you can pay, I kid you not, 250 pounds for a pair of boxing gloves. Fine for those people that can afford that, great, okay. But the average person um, cannot afford, uh, afford to fork out 250 pounds for a pair of boxing gloves, and a head guard, and boxing gloves, and, sh and boots, and shins, and the whole kit and caboodle. Again, a gum shield. You can go to Sports Direct and buy a gum shield for um, probably 79p or 80p. Or you can get a shock doctor one for about 25, 30 pounds. Probably even more. In fact, you can go to your dentist and get one fitted purposely for you. But you're talking probably three figure sum to get that done. So it's entirely up to you. Whilst we're on the subject of uh, kit and equipment, all equipment needs to be purchased from your instructor. A couple of reasons for that. A, they take out all the uh, hassle of you having to get it. If it doesn't fit properly, then you can um, just give it back to your instructor and your instructor sorts it out. They take the hit on sending it back or whatever, so you don't need to worry about that. They also uh, take out the delivery, because if you get it online, you know, you might get a, a head guard that costs you 20 pound. But by the time you pay the delivery, it's just the same as, um, as, as you get from your instructor anyway. Also, um, some of the stuff you get in some of the high street stores won't last you five minutes, okay? The, it's awful. The, the, the quality is at best shoddy and um, it's just really not worth it, it's really false economy. Okay, plus, okay, and we're perfectly honest, called Integrity Martial Arts, so um, it's, it's honesty, um, the instructor will make a little bit of commission from, from your purchase, okay? Um, so, you know, we're, we're quite upfront about it, um, and it's nice, you know, most of us have to pay our mortgage, particularly in today's current uh, crisis, have to pay a mortgage, so um, if you have any uh, stuff, we can make uh, a small percentage, okay? And again, you don't lose out because it's the same price that you would probably get it anywhere. All right, okay, hope you enjoyed that. Okay, wait and, and get the, uh, the next one, which is gonna be all the yellow belt combinations and all the yellow belt pad drills. Okay, so that will come next. Again, making this and you, you can understand now why a yellow belt has an awful lot to do. Okay, so um, yeah, great, okay. Lovely to uh, talk with you all. Obviously, I'd much rather talk to you in person, but, but we can't do it at the moment, so let's uh, crack on with it. Okay, all right, take care everyone. Bye, bye.